Well, good morning. I'm back in my shop and I'm going to do another video on this particular little item here. I'm going to make a stand for this and I'm going to show you in a second how I, uh, I'm going to do that. Right now I'm going to just comment on a few of the comments and questions I got on this particular uh, crazy burl bowl conundrum video. And if you recall, I put that into a bowl blank and put it attached it with hot melt glue. I'm going to put up the uh, people that made these recommendations because they're really worth quoting, but I don't have them in my head right now. So one of the ideas was to cover the back of this with like kitchen wrap, okay, like cling wrap or something like that. And then put foam insulation on the inside of this. Then stick your bowl down there like that, and I, and I assume just kind of let that dry. So what you have then is uh, more of this surface contacting something that's going to help seed it in there. Brilliant idea. Now, I'm going to readjust my camera. I'm going to show you one more thing. Now what you're looking at are the remnants of that bowl blank that I use. I had to destroy it to get it out. And I've had lots of questions about, well, how'd you get that out of there? Um, the first thing I did was I simply parted off that much with the, uh, the burl still attached in there. Then I just found little areas that I could bandsaw. So I, um, you know, bandsawed different sections of that. And then I was able to remove that fairly easy. And I did use a hair dryer to remove the little bits of glue. That worked very well. I had a little bit still uh, sticking to my, my burl, but that was pretty good. Somebody suggested, and again, I can't remember the name, but another good idea was you can take this hot melt glue off with denatured alcohol. So let's go on to the next step. Now I'm going to make a stand for my little project here. And if you look at this from the side, that's pretty much perpendicular to the table, at least this area right here. Well, if I put it like that, you can't really see into the bowl part of that very good. So I want that leaning back just a little bit. So that's my intention. I've got uh, a nice natural edge all the way around this except for this part right here. So that's an ideal place to make that uh, a bit of a tenon on there so it sticks into a piece of wood. Eventually I'm going to take this and I'm going to level that off. This, this is fairly flat right across here. Now, what I'm going to do, and this is an idea from our club president, Mike Patrick, great idea. He said, why don't you just cut off a slab right here which is exactly where I took that burl from and make that the base or the stand. Great idea because what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll make a, oh I don't know, a hollow form or something out of this and I'm probably going to take a lot of that figure out of there so I might as well use it. I've got my bandsaw set up, lower the blade guard, And I've got my taller fence on this. I'm probably an inch away, so that's the uh, dimension I'm going for. Now this log didn't sit firmly up against the fence, so I had to wedge it. I'm pointing to the little wedge right there. As I move this through the bandsaw, it took me over a minute to do this. So I've got to speed it up a little bit. So there we are, on to the design phase. I got to take some time and really think about how I'm going to do this, but uh, there's some really cool figure right here. I don't want to hide that, so maybe if I put that back here, it's almost like a mirror image of that. Very cool. Here we go. Okay, we're on to a little woodworking here. I've taken this part right here and made that flat on my uh, belt sander. And I need to make this part right here more of a tenon, so I need to take off that irregular shape. 
And I'm just going to put a, a little washcloth on there to protect my hand. So, combination of, I'm going to do a little sawing on that. And then chisel that here. And maybe if I can get my rabbit plane in there, that'll really refine that. So, I'm going to come up here as high as I can. I might even take off a little bit of this right here. These are great saws. I've got a bunch of these Japanese saws. And they cut on the pull stroke, which means that they are going to make a straighter line. This is a very fine saw. Yeah, Now I want to make sure I don't go through this and cut too far, so stop right there for a second. I'm going to take my chisel and I'm going to just uh, knock off as much of this as I can. So I'm going to just pare off this as much as I can with my chisel. And I don't really need a very deep tenon, probably this is going to be 5 eighths of an inch or so. Alright, now I'm going to see if I can get my rabbit plane in here. Which is a great tool for this sort of thing. So there's my tenon, pretty happy with that, it's uh, nice and flat through there. That's fairly flat. I need to do a little bit of sanding on this. So the next step is to make a mortise that my tenon will go into at an angle. And I'm probably going to do that with hand tools. I could get a router and make a jig and stuff, but uh, I think uh, I can do that with hand tools fairly fast. So. Now I'm at my drill press, and as I mentioned, I wanted my burl piece to sit at an angle so it'd be easier to view the inside of the bowl. I've got my fence moved up. I've got a little block of wood prop, propping up the piece I'm drilling, and I'm just drilling out the waste, and later on I'll take a chisel and remove that waste and clean up the mortise. Now I'm back at my workbench and I'm going to just take a chisel and remove the waste. One thing I didn't show is I took a very sharp marking knife and I carved a little bit of a line in the front and the back. And those grooves give me a place where I can put my chisel and line that up and have a very crisp line for my tenon as I put that in there. Now very seldom do I have an idea when I'm doing a project that carries through from beginning to end. And this is a great example of that. The more I look at the bowl part of my burl here, the base is a mirror image of that. And you'll see that in a second when I put those two together. This area right here is identical in the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my base on there, onto this piece of wood that you can't see. I've got double stick tape right here and I'm going to make a little mirror image bowl right in the base. Okay, now what you're looking at is another project. This is canary wood. It's maybe an inch thick. So I'm going to make a little platter out of that. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to just uh, take advantage of that and I'm going to use that as a chuck for the base of my project. So I've got a center hole. There we go. Now I've got my smallest bowl gouge here. This is a quarter inch bowl gouge that I'm going to use to dish that out. I've got the depth of that set on 
a set of vernier calipers, so I want to be really careful not to go through that because that'd be a disaster. So I'm also going to put a little bead around right where that uh, pencil line is. So I've got my lay speed turned all the way down to zero. Punch the forward button. Well, I really like my double stick tape. This project has a very low profile. My base is maybe an inch thick, and right now I'm going to dish out the center. I'm using my quarter inch bowl gouge, and I'm going to soon find that I need a little bit bigger tool. This is just taking too much time, but the double stick tape is holding very nicely. I do like the quarter inch bowl gouge. It's a, a very handy little tool. And I don't really have much of a bowl here. It's maybe three inches across. Now I'm going to take my beading tool and establish a bead right along this uh, edge right here. Now what I'm dealing with, I've got this uh, mortise right here, so I don't, I don't want to get too close to that. I don't want that to interfere. Now again, this is a D-Way tool, and to make this tool work properly, the cut should be right at center line. But it's a very nice little tool for beading, and I've got a couple sizes. It works very well. Now I'm going to go back to my quarter-inch bowl gouge and just do a little detailing on either side of the bead I just made. The bead is going to be a little bit proud of the surface so it stands out a little more. And I'm working on the inside where the bowl is just to blend the bead into the transition with the bowl. Okay, we'll check our depth here and I'm in pretty good shape. I like that profile. I'm going to take a scraper and just clean up any of my tool marks on there. Now I think while I get this chucked up in my lathe, I'm going to do just a little bit of fine tuning around this area here. I'll get some uh, saw marks on that. And then I'll go back to my workbench. We'll put this together. Here is my finished project. And I've decided I'm going to glue this into the base. So there's my um, burl. And here's the base with my dished out little bowl in there. So I'm pretty happy with that. I like that. Not bad. I'll just turn that around. There's the back of it. So we save the back, and that was the whole idea. Come here. Come here. Oh, uh, stupid bells. Okay. There's the back of my project, and uh, the whole reason for doing this, the first uh, part of this series, and now, is to save this burl on the back. And hopefully, even a wood turner might say, gee, how'd they do that? And that's kind of a reaction that we're all looking for sometime when we make something. So there we go. And uh, thank you very much for hanging in there with me to the end of this project. Talk to you next time.